CNN reporting Thursday that there was a pornographic website message board. They say Robinson posted to that website calling himself a black, a black Nazi, saying he wanted to reinstate slavery, and calling himself a perv who enjoyed transgender pornography. I've heard from some North Carolina folks it wasn't exactly a huge secret that something might be here, but Trump endorsed him in a primary, and he was a fiery public speaker who owned the libs a lot. And yeah. so he appealed to that primary electorate. If Kamala Harris wins in the great state of North Carolina, she's got a 95% chance of winning the election. There are many maps in which she can win the election without North Carolina. That's less so for Donald Trump because he has only a 77% chance of winning the election if he wins in North Carolina. Well, a bombshell new scandal just dropped about the Trump-endorsed Republican gubernatorial candidate of North Carolina. And it's so devastating that many Republicans are publicly panicking and speculating that it will cost Donald Trump North Carolina and consequently the entire presidential election. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several, several clips to talk about in this video. As a matter of fact, I was thinking to myself, man, this could be two videos, this could be three videos because there's so much to unpack. I don't want it to be a 45 minute special, which drags on. So we're going to play a lot of clips. We're going to brisk through these. Some of this may be edited out for time. So I'm doing this in real time. But here is, of course, the Fox Propaganda Network weighing in, and uh, they're not happy about it. Mark Robinson denying accusations that he posted inflammatory comments on a porn site more than a decade ago, Robinson is vowing to stay in the race despite these reports. Steve Harrigan, live from Atlanta, with more on this story. Hi, Steve. Hi, Martha. There were rumors that Robinson might withdraw. Now, the deadline for doing that would have been midnight last night. Absentee ballots already going out today with Robinson's name on that ballot. CNN reporting Thursday that there was a pornographic website message board. They say Robinson posted to that website calling himself a black, a black Nazi, saying he wanted to reinstate slavery and calling himself a perv who enjoyed transgender pornography. Robinson has denied all of these statements, saying he's the victim of a high tech lynching. Those are not the words of Mark Robinson. You know my words, you know my character, and you know that I have been completely transparent in this race and before. Our opponents are desperate to sit, shift the focus here from the substantive issues and focus on what you are concerned with to salacious tra tabloid trash. So far, a lot of Republicans have taken a wait-and-see attitude towards these allegations. Roy Cooper, the Democratic governor of North Carolina, said Republicans are reaping what they sow for nominating an extreme candidate. Former President Trump endorsed Robinson back in March. Obviously, nothing is guaranteed, but we'll get into why this could be potentially devastating, if not game-changing, given that Donald Trump needs North Carolina to win the presidency, statistically speaking. The vice president doesn't, but it would be great if we could get that in play. So again, we're going to go through some other clips. I just want you to know it's so bad. This scandal about Mark Robinson, the current Republican lieutenant governor of North Carolina, my state, who's running for the top job, it's so bad. You might recognize this guy up in the top corner. That's Hugh Hewitt. That's, this is a MAGA Republican Fox contributor who is as MAGA devoted as they can possibly get, okay? This guy thinks that Trump walked on water, can do no wrong, is by his side. This is what Hugh Hewitt says about Mark Robinson and the scandal. Well, you should drop out. Uh, there's a reason Mark Robinson has never been a guest on any forum that I've hosted. Uh, I always thought he was voluble. I never thought that he would be on a forum like this, but there were Republicans begging him to drop out. Yes, he should drop out. He's disqualified. Fall is the season, not just for harvesting everything in the field, but for harvesting oppo research. I can't believe he got this far without this coming out, but it is effective. He's done. He's finished. And he should be. That's Hugh Hewitt. Again, just uh, folks, you got to think when there's somebody that ruthless, that cynical, that unprincipled, that devoted to Donald Trump saying, yeah, this guy is insane. He is dead weight. He should drop out. That says something. Matthew Gertz from Media Matters also made a point. No mention of the GOP self-proclaimed black Nazi candidate uh, for North Carolina governor, Mark Robinson, yesterday on Fox News, the Ingram angle. 
Jesse Waters primetime, Hannity, or Gutfeld if you're wondering how that is all going. So again, folks, think about it. Those folks have never met a scandal that they could not desperately try to spin. And in the immediate aftermath of these radioactive allegations, this bombshell reporting, they wanted nothing to do with it, even though they know that North Carolina is a state that Donald Trump must win. And again, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But in terms of CNN, they were the ones who broke the report, the K-file. And so the reporter behind this investigative reporting, he's, I want to play a clip in which he goes into some of the sordid details about Mark Robinson's internet history, which again, may cost certainly, or much more likely, he the election. You know, he was already trailing the Democratic candidate for governor. Again, we'll get into all of that. But this may have a decisive outcome determinative effect on Donald Trump's presidential bid. I want to walk our viewers through just a few of the ones that we're even allowed to show uh, on TV. In, in one disturbing post, Robinson uh, defended slavery, writing, quote, slavery is not that bad. I wish they would bring slavery back. I would certainly own a few. Another thing that we found was that Robinson uh, used uh, slurs on the website. We found that he often used anti-gay slurs. He used an anti-Jewish slur. He used an anti-Muslim slur. Uh, and he even disparaged civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., calling him a, quote, commie bastard and Martin uh, Lucifer then using uh, a racial slur. All right. So. You, the, the OK. And this is just barely scratching the surface. There's a full readout and a writeout of um, what happened um, in terms of that investigative reporting and the sordid history of Mark Robinson, whom, whom I should also say, let's be very clear. Mark Robinson has been scandal driven since the beginning. OK, this is a guy who has made public on camera disparaging comments. He's he's the one who said that some people just need killing. He's uh, publicly disdained the LGBTQ community. He has disdained gay marriage, gay rights, the trans community, disparaged women. He has disparaged the civil rights movement and everything. I mean, this is all stuff he's done in public. And as a consequence of this, again, we'll get into some of the details, some of the 538 projections. He has been trailing uh, current Attorney General Josh Stein, the Democratic candidate looking to replace Repo uh, Democratic Governor Roy Cooper. So he was already behind the eight ball. And then this comes out. Woo! But again, as you know, one of my favorite things to do is have Fox News react to bad news for the uh, Republicans. And uh, so I want to play. Uh, a panel of one of the few shows to actually cover this on Fox, a uh, special report with Brett Baer. Again, the Republican surrogates, not happy about this. He has come out and said those are not his words. Obviously, this is a candidate that former President Trump has uh, supported and praised numerous right. times, and North Carolina is very close. So you look back to someplace like Pennsylvania, where Doug Mastriano last time maybe hurt the Republicans on the Senate race. Could that happen here in North Carolina? Yeah, that was a lot of the story of 2022, right? The, the things I see in this Fox News poll that are great for Trump is that Republicans are much more closely aligned with voters' concerns than uh, Democrats are, and that he's trusted. But that was the case in 2022 also. And candidates and candidate issues like the one that's coming up in North Carolina are what derailed that. People went, I'm, I can't vote for these guys, even though I agree with them on the issues and think they're better to hand, handle the issues if these are the folks that they're picking to represent. I've heard from some North Carolina folks, it wasn't exactly a huge secret that something might be here, but Trump endorsed him in a primary and he was a fiery public speaker who owned the libs a lot. And yeah. so he appealed to that primary electorate. The word inside Trump world staff is that he is persona non grata. They would like him to get off the race, out of the race, off the ballot. I don't think you can get out off the ballot. The ballot's already out. Um, but I don't think he's going to be showing up at any rallies uh, to get the uh, support of the former president or the vice presidential nominee. Yeah, I mean, it's already very clear that, that Trump and his campaign are trying to distance themselves as far as possible from what's going down right now in North Carolina. And again, it is another example of, you know, every Republican I talk to say we need to focus on policy. Let's stick to policy. We feel like we have um, an advantage there. We can compare what we want to do in the future to what we think Harris wants to do. But time and time again, we keep having these, you know, kind of side conversations, these side scandals. Trump says something. Now this situation in North Carolina, that's just going to derail the conversation in a way that does not help Republicans. 
And again, Mary Catherine Hamm, the, the conservative outkick commentator who went first, uh, the first woman to respond there, um, she gave the game away. Mark Robinson was embraced by the Republican primary electorate because he quotes, own the libs. That's what he does. That's all they care about. Every time a Republican tells you, be it a conservative influencer, a Republican politician, or really even a Republican voter, anytime they tell you that we're really all about policy, it's BS. It's not true. It's demonstrably false. If that were the case, Donald Trump would not be the leader of the Republican Party. Carrie Lake would not be a Senate, excuse me, a Senate candidate in Arizona. Mark Robinson would not be a gubernatorial candidate in North Carolina. Marjorie Taylor Greene wouldn't be a sitting member of Congress. It's about owning the libs. It, that is a fact. If you stack policy in the Republican Party and you put it in a diametrically opposed situation with owning the libs, let me say, as somebody who has many conservative family members and friends whom I love, if you give most Republicans a choice between policy and owning the libs, no matter how much they may crave policy, just reflexively, they will go for owning the libs. This is such a partisan divide. It's no different from somebody who knows they need to be on a strict diet. I'll use myself as an example. I need to be on a stricter diet. If you give me a choice between a celery stick and a Hershey's bar, even though I know I need the celery stick, I will reflexively go for the Hershey's bar. It's the same thing here. Mark Robinson was embraced by Trump. Not by, nobody forced Trump to do it. I mean, the, I've got... There are so many examples. I, I've got a folder here. I'm probably just going to pull it up and show you some examples. Otherwise, if I play the clips for you, this thing, this video will last like another 15 minutes of Donald Trump, apropos of nothing, for no damn good reason, publicly calling uh, Mark Robinson the next Martin Luther King Jr., better than Martin Luther King Jr. He says twice as good as Martin Luther King Jr. And now this, this is a self-inflicted wound. They have no one but themselves to blame. K-File report, by the way, the, the actual investigative report with all the screenshots, folks, it's devastating. Again, look at how much we're scrolling. If we read this thing, we'd be here for three more hours. So Mary Catherine Hamm, again, that Fox News contributor, that OutKick contributor, she gave the game away. Even though in so many ways Republicans are advantaged in this electoral system, they constantly snatch defeat from the jaws of victory because their motivation is to own the libs. Their fault. But as I said, even prior to all this, um, things weren't looking great for Mark Robinson. All the polls had uh, Attorney General Stein in the lead, up by five, up by eight, up by 13, up by eight, up by nine, up by 12, up by 10, up by 10 or 13. Like in the aggregate, it was about a 10% uh, swing. And Donald Trump, ooh, it is within the margin of error. Trump is up by 0.1%. In a state that Democrats have not won in terms of the Electoral College votes since President Obama in 2008. Now, North Carolina is a purple state. It is. For every registered Republican, you will find at least one registered Democrat. But again, as I've, as I've mentioned before, Republicans, when they got into power in North Carolina, did everything possible to entrench their institutional advantages. Okay, They changed the rules to benefit them because they didn't want a competitive electorate. Then Democrats were able to make it happen with voting maps. Such that last year's, excuse me, the last cycle's voting maps had a 7 7 congressional split. There were seven Republican Congress people going to the United States House of Representatives from North Carolina and seven Democrats, even though both of North Carolina's uh, senators are Republican. But it was a split. That just goes to show how purple it was. Then the state Supreme Court had a vacancy, and we elect our state Supreme Court justices, a conservative one tipping the balance in favor of the Republicans. The Republicans challenged that balance map. That state Supreme Court granted the conservative challenge, ruled in their favor. And as a consequence, we're probably going to lose three to four of the Democrats' seats. That's how lopsided these damn maps are, because that's how Republicans play politics. It's the exact opposite of what we've been able to accomplish in Wisconsin. So let's refer all the way back to CNN. And Harry Enten, which who is one of their uh, top election forecasters and analysts, um, he makes the case that this is potentially devastating for Donald Trump's presidency. This. Yeah. All right. So let's just take a look at where we are in the polls in North Carolina. Look, it's as close as you can be in the presidential race. It is a tie right at this particular hour in the governor's race. Even before this scandal rocked everything, the Democrat um, Stein was ahead by 10 points. So the bottom line was, look. Mark Robinson was very likely to lose this race even before the scandal. Now he's likely more 
likely to lose this race. So let's talk about the tie in North Carolina and the importance of that state in this election. All right. So this is the chance of winning the election if you win North Carolina. The bottom line is this. If Kamala Harris wins in the great state of North Carolina, she's got a 95 percent chance of winning the election. There are many maps in which she can win the election without North Carolina. That's less so for Donald Trump because he has only a 77 percent chance of winning the election if he wins in North Carolina. So the bottom line is must win state much more for Donald Trump than it is for Kamala and Harris. This is according to Nick. There you go. There you go, folks. Even with North Carolina, which Trump, it was going to be tough for Trump, but Trump was favored to win just because, again, a Democrat hasn't won North Carolina since 2008. Even with North Carolina, he only had a 77% chance of winning the presidency. If Vice President Harris wins North Carolina, it bumps up to 95% for her. So he needs North Carolina so much more than she does. But if she wins it, it all but guarantees she will win the presidency. So this is devastating for Trump and Republicans. They're currently freaking out. I say it's hilarious. I say we should signal boost this story as much as humanly possible because, quite frankly, they deserve it for picking these loser candidates because all they care about is owning the libs rather than making their lives and the, the lives of their constituents that much better. They reap what they sow indeed. So let's delight in their despair and make sure we maximize it to all possible potential. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.